Tonight on The New Inventors, why we need a new way of collecting horse poo, how to measure out ingredients with your eyes closed, and emergency lighting that's only there when you need it. Hi, I'm James O'Loughlin, also tonight. The amazing story behind the first collapsible umbrella and how karaoke came to torment us. And, of course, our brilliant yet compassionate judges. Tonight, they're agricultural scientist Chris Russell, engineering professor Veena Sahajwala and designer Alison Page. Welcome all. So who would have thought we'd start off tonight talking about horse poo? But for people with horses collecting the poo from the paddocks is a hassle and you have to do it because if you don't, it's bad news for the pasture and bad news for the horse. One solution is to teach horses how to use toilets. Tricky. Here's another. It's hard work keeping a horse paddock clean. And don't I know it, I've spent many hours picking up horse poo with a shovel and carting it away in a wheelbarrow and the next day, uh, ouch. So some people simply leave the manure to rot or pick it up only now and then, but that runs the risk of disease and ruins the valuable feed space for your horse. My invention scoops up the manure in a shovel-like action as it is driven over the paddock. It's like a mini trailer that turns into a scoop when you flip the wheels over the top. You then attach the unit to the back of a ride-on mower, quad bike or similar vehicle and away you go. Once the manure is collected, you simply swing the wheels back under the scoop tray and reverse the drawbar to transport the manure to a waste site. With my invention, I spend far less time cleaning the paddocks and have a lot more time to smell the roses. Please welcome from Long Worry in Victoria, Mark Bridgman, and with him, Person Rod and Horse Cisco. <laughs> Hello, Mark. Hi. Hi. Guys, how are you? Now, firstly, you were on before with yes. the uh, phase changer yes. for converting electricity. Yes. That's going big, I understand. Uh, it's growing, yeah. yeah. We've probably now sold um, uh, probably about 2,000 units in various Fantastic. countries around the world. That's our main business, yeah. yeah so great. this is by accident. So you just show us how it works. There's a lot of poo there. From, thank you very much, sorry, Cisco. From Cisco, from its very um, <laughs> place where poo comes out. Okay. Uh, do you want to show us how it works? Yeah. Okay. All right, good. Is that all one go? No. <laughs> There's a few goes. A few goes. Yeah, good. Well, look at that. It's in, and then okay. you can convert it. What I've done is I've, I've basically done the scoop. There'll be an area in the collection in the front there. Yep. What I do, I'll just carry a shovel around. I'll just push it back in, yep. like that. Right. And it, it would work if it was rough ground too, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We can set it up for different environments. Yeah. But Tip the wheels back. Now, what I'll do, I'll disconnect it from the tow vehicle. Yep. Right. And then I'll you have to turn push, it. I'll just push it back a bit so I've got a bit of room. You turn it from a sled into a trailer, basically. Yeah. Don't so you? the drawbar comes out. Yeah. Right. The drawbar gets put in the opposite end. I'll just stand here and do nothing because yeah, you, you just seem to be doing quite well. Okay, so drawbar now in this side. Right. Yep. Grab quite the wheels. Enjoying it. Yeah. Put the wheels on the ground and just roll it under. Like nice. That. You lock the wheels in place. Tow it away. Now it's a trailer. Yep. So I can tow it off to and where I want to get rid of it. To your poo emptying spot. Yep. So to where I want to get rid of it. And, and tip just it out. Tip it out like a wheelbarrow. And Lovely. It, yeah. Exactly so. where you picked it up from, but normally in a different place. <laughs> <laughs> normally in a different that's, that's place. That's about right. Yeah. Cisco, you've got a clean pasture, my friend. Lovely. Um, Mark, come across to okay. the panel. Leave your invention there. <laughs> Cisco and Rod, if you don't mind staying there and just staring at the poo for a while. Um, <laughs> people get many insights doing that. How much do they cost? And you sold a few already, haven't you? We've sold oh, probably about 30 units, roughly, so far. Great. For yeah. how, how much each? Uh, 9.90 we're selling them for. Yeah, OK. Uh, Chris? Yeah, well, Mark, any, I mean, any of us who have worked on horse studs know that poo picking duty is uh, standard de rigueur. It's really important, I think, on adjustment or spelling studs so you don't get a transfer of parasites from one horse to another. You mentioned in the demonstration that that really you adjust it for different types of grass. Yeah. What about different grasses? Oh, look, in the grass, because it's got a fair bit of weight to it, there's about 40 kilos, um, it will actually 
push the grass down and it will still pick it up, even if it's stuck to the ground. There is lots of different environments that you're dealing in. So on. what percentage is it going to get out of long grass? Look, on, I would say you're probably talking around about 80, 90 per cent in that okay. region, realistically, right? And, and again, it also depends on how rough it is. If you've got lots of holes and divots and that, you know, I think you've got to use a bit of common sense. I mean, there's different methods on the market. Um, we're probably under a third of the price of the next priced product that's out mm -hmm. there. Um, and I think every option, everything I've looked at has pluses and minuses. Uh, Vena. Have you considered the possibility of, in fact, using different types of recycled materials? That might help you. No, I haven't. <laughs> no, I haven't considered it. Um, I mean, steel is strong, it's basic, it's very easy to get, it can be easily worked with and, and, and a product made out of it. So, mm, so. Uh, and then we just, when we use cold galv on the, all the joints. Right. So look, it's, it's the whole thing is, I don't want something that's too expensive, it's got mm -hmm. to be simple, straightforward, and as you look at it, you know, I've done a few horse shows with it now, and everyone who looks at it just about says, it is so simple, mm. you know, why didn't someone else think of it? Well, mm. that was well because thing. you did, because you're yeah. the small one, <laughs> Alison. Yeah, that's right. Uh, how often do you have to use this if you've only got one or two horses? Um, <laughs> that depends on who you talk to. Uh, some people say you've got to pick it up daily and there's fanatics out there that do. Mm -hmm. um, we would probably run around our paddocks once a week maybe, yeah. you know, uh, once every couple of weeks. But even then, um, it doesn't take much effort. Doing it this way, it's no big deal. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you're doing it by hand, you've really got to be on top of it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Summing up, Chris. Yeah, well, I mean, compared with the alternative, uh, it's a no-brainer. I think for that home home market in particular, uh, I can see that being very popular. And if it can get enough to really satisfy the the very finicky demands of the adjustment market, <laughs> yeah. then Another you've got reason. an even bigger market again. Yeah. Mark, you really solved a dirty problem without actually getting your hands dirty. So I mean, to me, that's brilliant. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Look, it's a grunty wheelbarrow, saves you back. I love that, but what is good about it as well is that it makes collection easier so you can turn that uh, liability into an asset and start selling that fertiliser or use it on your own paddock. Yep. I always love an inventor who returns with something well, else. Good you. luck with it, Mark. Thank you, thank very, you much. very much. Please thank Mark Bridgman. Well, tonight's winner could be named our Inventor of the Year. Will it be the horse poo collecting super scooper, the new way of measuring the Verso measuring lid, or the emergency light that's only there when you need it, the fire exit paver? Let's look first at the one we need the most. Chris, which one do we need the most? Well, for me, as a, as a crap scraper from way back with wheelbarrow and shovel, for me, I think the, the, the uh, scooper, super scooper, is really something we need to solve that problem. Because yeah. the trouble is people don't do it because it's such a pain in the backside to do. Yeah. I agree, Chris. I mean, the super scooper, it, it is really critical because, for me, it's also about having devices that don't suck up a lot of energy. It's simple. It does the job. Um, I do think, though, that the best design tonight is easily the Super Scooper. I mean, it's just really robust. It's really simple. It's a wheelbarrow and a, a sort of a harrowing machine. Chris, who's tonight's winner? Um, yes, well, for me, it's going to be the Super Scooper. Yep. Um, I, I just think it's very simple, very original, and he's got an instant market amongst, particularly amongst the home horse market. Either of you disagree? Well, I was Guess weighing not. up between the fire exit paver for me and the super scooper, but, um, you know, I didn't even realise that horse sick paddocks are an environmental issue too, so I'd have to go with the super scooper. And is it I unanimous, I think it's Peter? a unanimous one today. There we go, Mark Bridgman and his super scooper is our winner tonight. Good on you, Mark. Well done. Thank Congratulations you. Thank once you. again. Thank well, Mark could become our inventor of the year. And if you Thanks to our judges. Well done. No problem. Okay. Big round of applause for our inventors. And finally, tonight's quote from Walter Baghot, who said, the greatest pleasure in life is doing what other people say you can't do. Good night. Well done, mate.